Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel where we make pretty costumes and things. Welcome to the first construction video on making Emily the Corpse Bride. So this week we're going to be making her bodice. The challenges for this week are like the things that I'm hoping to learn and then obviously overcome are learning just a little bit more weathering techniques. I would also like to play a little bit with um, like foam sculpties. That's how we're going to be doing her ribs. And then obviously attaching the ribs to the, the bodice. Those are going to be kind of our challenges and the areas that I'm going to hopefully improve on this week. A couple of days ago, I did start the pattern drafting process and I made a mock-up. So let's go back in time and see what I have going on there to figure out where we need to begin for today. Like every single mock-up ever on this channel, the bust is very big, the waist is okay, the hips are okay. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is take out the, so I added a half an inch seam allowance to like all of the seams from the draping. I'm gonna take the entire seam allowance on this seam here, on both sides of them off. So that'll take everything in by a full inch, which is good because we need this here to also like be pushed and moved because we're, we're building this like a corset. And then for the bust in the front, we are also gonna mm, like this line up until right here is fine. And then from here to the top also needs to get in by like a half an inch on each side, like a full, full whoop-de-doo, like this much. Um, that's just my body. So I think the, the next step that I'm gonna do is I have a lot of denim, like I have enough denim to make two of these. So I am, and denim is what I'm using for Cotil because Cotil is a little expensive. This, all of the hem, like all of the body is gonna be two inches longer. So we'll be two inches here. This will get two inches. So all of this will be longer. I was looking at like proportionally where her waist is and like the small of my waist is right here so proportionally where her waist is the distance between her waist and her like the top of her bodice is the same between here and the bottom of this uh, like the asymmetry so we want to kind of mimic that anyway that's what we're doing those are our plans I'm going to actually my steps then after adjusting the pattern I am going to make a cotton plus denim lining that will have boning in it which will be these bones but we won't cut these until we are like final 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 that lining section is going to be like another mock-up but if it has all of the fixes I want, it's just gonna be the lining, uh, if that makes any sense. So like, we're gonna do this whole thing again with what is potentially our lining. And then from there, we will um, make the outer fabric. So, yay. Okay, so today we are going to take our pattern that I refined, and we are gonna start by cutting out this layer of, this might be actually... Cotel. So we're gonna use this because I have it on hand and I think I have enough. Um, hopefully I don't ruin it. I said I was gonna use denim for this, but I seem to have Cotil on hand. So we're gonna cut out a layer of this and do a fitting with that. And then if the fitting is all kosher, we feel good about it, we can add our boning channels and get this fully boned and set it aside. And then we can cut out our top fabrics uh, with our pattern as well. So my goal for today, I'm really gonna try to get this bodice wrapped up in three days, today, tomorrow, and Thursday. <laughs> Our goal for today is to get the, the pattern like 100% finalized, like no, this is what we're doing. Get the lining made and boned. And then also get all of the fabric cut out for the top layers. So that means the lace as well as the satin, and then pin them together and get them started on the hand basting process. Since I will be flatlining them together, I want to hand baste them. 
I would also really like to sculpt the ribs because according to my directions, it says it takes two to three days to dry. Okay, so since my foam clay hasn't arrived yet and I really don't have time to just like wait to do this till the end because there's a lot of things that have to happen in order me, for me to finish this bodice, the ribs are one of them. So I picked up some Model Magic. I've used this before. It, it takes, on, on the back, it says that it takes 72 hours to dry depending on thickness of the piece. Remember when I said we were gonna finish this Thursday? We might have to rethink this. We're still gonna try to sculpt some ribs today. Uh, I, they're not gonna be super thick, like I can't imagine them being too thick, but we're gonna sculpt this today we're gonna weather we're gonna do weathering patches we're gonna figure out what is the color combination for the weathering and we're gonna get ourselves set up for hand basting so that i can do hand basting and get the bodice started to go that's a lot we'll see how much i can get done i'm starting a little earlier than i normally do so that's nice and uh like i said i've already got my pattern pieces so that's great. Um, I've got my second cup of coffee for the day, which means I am rocking and a rolling. So yeah, so I guess let's just get started. We have so much to do that we really don't have time to dilly dally. Somebody tell me that at one o'clock when I'm just sitting on my phone. Yeah, all right, <laughs> let's get started. Okie dokie, here's where we're at. Now, obviously I have my fake grommets in the back and we're here with like, this is way wide and open. I have an idea of how, uh, well, okay, so first it can close a tiny bit more, but I think what I need to do is in this back one here, add a gusset. I don't want it to necessarily meet, but I definitely didn't take in consideration by lengthening it, like how much I'd have to widen it too. So that's an issue. Uh, obviously it's going to wrinkle because there's no boning in it. The boning is what's going to really support it. Uh, I do like the length. I do like where the waist hits. Um, I do like where the bust hits. I, I need a little help getting it closed in the back. I just physically can't like pull and keep it taut but anyway um also i don't know why i get dressed up at the beginning of the day when i know i'm going to be doing a fitting whatever who cares so um i think that what i'm going to do is i think i'm going to figure out this gusset here it's almost lunch time so i'm going to try to get all of that done before lunch so yes i'm back we're not going to go super in depth but the gussets have made it to where these can get a little closer um Obviously, I don't have grommets in them. And then also, this is like folding in on itself because of how I did my back thing. But um, I'm confident that it'll fit. And I'm confident that these will like, this will work. Um, so now the next steps are going to be to waist tape this, put the boning in, and then get started on the top layers. I've made notes on my current uh, pieces of the gussets and then the size of the gusset and where the gusset is. So that should help me remember that when I'm making the top pieces. I mean, I'm only gonna be doing that in like an hour. So like that shouldn't be an issue, but that is that. I like the fit a lot. Again, we're gonna get some weird <laughs> cause I'm not boned and I also don't have it grommeted exactly how it's going to be. It's got, these cute little like wings, but that's not how it's gonna fit when it actually can close. And then the last thing is, um, I will have to make a modesty panel. I think I'm gonna do that at the very, very end once I've got the skirt done. Um, I'll do like a modesty panel to see kind of how long it needs to be. Um, and then I'll whip stitch it in on one side. It's not gonna be a huge thing, but that will be at the very end. It, it's gonna be kind of like a final finishes thing. But here we go. Let's let's do the cuter, more fun bits of this project. Uh, lunch first though, because I'm very hungry. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I have pinned all of my boning channels. 
And something that I did was on these two curved edges, I actually used my pinking shears and I pinked um, the curve here and there. And then I trimmed this down because I have these pressed outward instead of open. They were just creating bulk and I didn't like that. So that's what I did for that. I will also show you really quick what I'm using for my channels. This is what I use for hooping wire. It's basically like two layers together. I can't open it with my hand on the camera. There we go. So if you can see like they, it's just two layers of what looks like a twill tape sewn together. I use it for hooping. That is my boning. Oh, I guess I can explain that too. Um, I have labeled all of the channels, the lengths that I need my bones so that I could measure and make sure I had enough with that. So I have enough for these main ones and I suspect that I will need maybe one in the middle. I don't know yet, but I have enough for that. I don't have enough for the sides, but that's actually okay because I'm gonna do a flat steel for the side. And when I get there, I'll show you kind of what that looks like. I have flat steel for my hoop skirts, so I figured I can use that, but that's kind of one of the last steps before adding grommets, and grommets are the last step. So like, I'm probably not gonna get there for a little bit. So now, let's sew this up. All right, so all of the boning is in the channels. Um, I have cut my two pieces of flat steel. You can hear Eva scratching herself in the corner. I'm gonna switch gears really quick. Okay, so I'm switching gears and I'm going to um, sculpt out the ribs for the like patch where you can kind of see her ribs. And then I'm also going to do weathering tests. I wanna make like four different tests of fabric, basically the layers that I have to do on, and then we're gonna paint over it to get an idea of what color we wanna use and um, all of that jazz. So I wanna get all of that done so that we can also see the paint dry overnight Plus we need the ribs to get drying as soon as possible. Once I've done that, if there's still time today, we will cut out fabric and start basting the lace to the bodice. Yay. So like obviously they're not dry. Um, oh wow, these look way different on camera. Okay, well still on camera, I still like this one the best and I have to explain something. So when I was doing this color, which is this right here, I was like, oh man, like that's too bright. This is like too light and this is too dark, but I want them in between this. And I was like, you know, let's skip this color and let's mix these two to try to get something in the middle. And that's where I got this. So now I like this color. I'm gonna let it dry, obvi. But my thought is, because I need to get the color kind of perfect, I might make a bunch. I might see if I have any like empty of these or I also have some glass jars that might be empty and then like make a whole batch that's the color I want. But uh, something too I need to think about is I was brushing way too hard, mainly cause like I'm trying to buzz through this, right? Like I'm like, okay, let's just get the colors figured out. Um, so something I'm gonna have to do is do a much lighter brush, like a more dry brush than just say like brushing it on because I want it to pick up some of the trim and some of the stuff above the trim, but I don't necessarily want it to get splotchy on the back like it did here and obviously in all of the rest. So 
again, we're gonna let this dry, see how it looks, and I'm gonna make some life decisions, but I'm, I'm leaning towards this color-wise. Uh, so yeah, now I guess it's time to get this moved over to that corner there, and I can wash off my table and get my table ready to cut that fabric, woo! All right, so everything that I wanted to get done today, I got done, so I feel like a rock star. Swatches, like paint swatches, and I'm pretty certain which paint I'm gonna use. My ribs are done. I do need to paint them and attach them and all that jazz, but like, the scary part is done. The scary part is done. Um, and now I do have like everything pinned. Um, I realized I need to press my satin, so I have it loosely pinned. And tomorrow, the first thing I'll do is press all my satin. I'm very excited. I'm very shocked at how much I was able to get done. I'm very excited. And now I'm ready to have a just as productive day tomorrow as I did today. So that is super heckin' excited. Wow. All right, let's do it. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, friends, we are back at it again. Today, we're gonna try to get all of the lace overlay done, get the bodice pieces together, get the trim sewn on, and get the, the weather or the base paint on. If we can get all of that done, and there's a solid like couple hour break after the weathering and to dry, I might be able to do beadwork tonight. I might also have to do it tomorrow, but um, if I can at least just get the paint laid by the end of the day today, I think I can finish this tomorrow. I checked on my little uh, ribs and they are starting to harden and that's awesome. Once they are hard, I can attach them to the felt and then um, tomorrow I should be able to attach the entire like little felt piece onto this bodice, do some of the weathering around it, and lay down beadwork, lay, like get the pieces together, and basically have a finished bodice by the end of the day tomorrow. A little update about, if you saw the video on the plan with me, I talked about purchasing a, um, a backdrop. Thanks to my Patreon, I was able to purchase the backdrop. However, it won't arrive until September like 28th, so I will not do a pretty reveal section of the bodice with the backdrop for this week's video but for the skirt we will do like a fun reveal with the the um the backdrop i'll show it off a little and kind of explain to you like why i chose that backdrop and that company in like specific but i'm so excited like seriously thank you all so much that are over on my patreon you make a lot happen in this studio that i don't always share but i'm excited that we will be um getting that set up for the reveal sections for at least the skirt and probably like some of the the arm detailing and other stuff the final reveal of this whole costume is going to be its own video we're going to go to louisville kentucky to see amanda kim and alex we have a whole weekend planned so i'm either going to do like a vlog or i'm going to do just a really pretty reveal video we'll see but i just wanted to kind of check in with you all on that um if you do still want to become a patron to help me get another backdrop for the christmas project or to help pay for the the materials for the the Christmas project, please consider uh, heading over to patreon.com slash Casey Renee cosplay. We're going to, we're going to slay today. I hope you know that. Like, I hope you're prepared for how much I'm about to slay this project today. Okay, let's go. Okay, so all of my pieces are basically ready to be sewn together. So the next step is gonna be, I'm just gonna start at this edge and I'm gonna sew these together but leave the gap for the gusset and then do the gusset and then make my way down until we get to that gusset and then, yeah. So I'm gonna go do that. I don't feel like I need to show you all the steps of sewing together this bodice. I feel like 
it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you know, peace, 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 all that jazz. So I will check back in when these are all sewn together and then we'll talk about the trim, which is the next step. So yay, progress. Okay, it's all done. Look at that. See, um, pressing it was a little bit of a pain, but I, I was able to do it with a pressing cloth. So now I'm gonna move over here to my swatches. And I don't know if you remember, but I mixed two of the colors so that I could get um, a color between those two. And this is how it turned out and I love it. So I've got my paints, I've got my fabric medium and I have this jar and I'm gonna make as much of this color as I can with these two and this, put it in this jar and hopefully it won't dry out before I'm done with this project. And if it does, balls. Um, I also have this trim pre-cut, so I know I need 36 inches for the top and a little bit more than 40 inches for the bottom. So that's what I got cut here. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing now, instead of attaching the trim and then put like sewing them together and stuff, is actually sew our fashion fabric to our cotill lining, sew it together, and then have an entire, um, like get all of the it clean and whatnot, you know, finish the back with the, the boning in it and sew the bottom up and stuff. And then my plan is to hand stitch the trim on from there. And then I will also cut the little hole for the heart and place it in and do all the weathering and stuff around, not the heart, the bones, and then do all the weathering around that. And then I can add the sequins and beads and rhinestones at the very end. So that is my new order of operations. So right now I'm gonna paint so I can get my trim all done. And then I'm gonna sew coattail to fashion. And then once that is sewn and the boning is put into it, it'll probably be time for D&D. &D. And from there, uh, tomorrow we'll start off with the hand details. So that's where I'm at. That's where my brain is at. So let's, let's get going on that. All right, so I have gotten way more done than I thought I was going to today, which is awesome. We are now two days like on a roll, feeling great. All the trim is painted, all the pieces, like the two lining, the lining and the regular are all ready to be sewn up. So, oh, and my um, like little rib piece here is now like a rib piece. So that is awesome. And it is ready to be sewn into the main garment. So yeah, tomorrow is going to be, we're going to finish it. So that's exciting. All right. Um, I guess I'll just see you tomorrow. Hello friends. So it's actually been a few days since we discussed and worked on this bodice. I actually uh, had the opportunity to do a really cool like live mentorship on the Crown channel on Twitch. It's kind of a channel owned by Twitch and Amazon. So I got paid to mentor people um, during like a cosplay challenge, which was really fun, but it ended up taking quite a bit of Thursday and all of Friday. So I didn't get anything done. And then yesterday I went to the pumpkin patch and the apple orchard with Toby. We just really needed some kind of like a relaxing day. It's been pretty hectic and things are about to get really hectic for two weeks. So we needed a day to just relax, slow down, reconnect. And now I am back. I did manage at some point in the last like three days to pin the um, cotill and the fashion fabric. So we've got that pinned together and I'm gonna, the first step is gonna be to sew it and then uh, place the boning into the two back seams and then sew down the bottom seam. Seam, it's not seen. <laughs> um, and then I have my trim which is already cut and painted that I am going to uh, hand stitch onto the top and bottom of this. Once that is stitched down, I will then um, place my ribs. Uh, um, these are fully dry, fully ready. I will have to basically cut the fashion layer, put this in between those, the fashion and the lining, stitch around the entire edge. After all of that is done, 
I noticed when I was watching the movie a couple of weeks ago, not a week, a couple weeks ago, I think it was when I was draping this pattern, that in her dress or in her bodice, on the lace trim that is blue, there are like really large white pearl looking beads sticking out. So I would like to add some of those, probably not as large as hers. I'll find the largest white ones I have and see how they look on this in proportion. Um, but I'm gonna add some of pearls. I have some sequins I think I would like to add to this. And then I also wanna add some rhinestones to the fabric and also the trim. Once all of that is done, the only thing left is grommets and um, a reveal. So we're getting close. The hand sewing stuff does take me quite a bit of time and um, I'm just really ready to get this finished and move on to the skirt, which is what we'll be making next week. And I'll have a whole new video on that. So if you're watching this before that video is live, subscribe. But if you are watching this after Halloween, um, I'll have it in the like ending section of the next video or of this video like that video will be queued up for y'all so um i'm i'm ready to rock and roll on this so let's go so i'm about to hand stitch this down basically what i did was i just folded the, these two edges in and then i am going to stitch in between here to just get this to all lay flat and to look great as a seam and it's not going to matter because we're going to put this trim right on it and the way that it's going to lay is the little pointy bits are gonna lay over it. So it won't eventually get seen, so I could stitch it down, but I know stitching it down by machine will look ugly and I, I just don't wanna play that game. So we're gonna hand stitch this and then um, I'll check back in and show you, like I'll hand stitch this down. So we'll talk in a sec. Okay, so I have rhinestoned that. Uh, you can kind of see the glitter from it, which is really awesome. And now I'm going to add these pearls right here. I wanna just, these ones, just in sm some spaces on the top and the bottom. And then it's just grommets, but because it is uh, eight o'clock at night, I'm gonna do grommets in the morning because people are probably settling down and our houses, our units are pretty close together. So I don't want to like hammer and wake anyone up. So yeah, this I'm going to take into the other room and um, I'm going to watch, I'm going to start the Gilded Age. I haven't seen it yet. And hopefully I can get these all done in one to two episodes, but tomorrow we will have a reveal. So I'll see you then. All right, friends, so that's it on making Emily's bodice, the corpse bride's bodice, whatever we're calling her these days. Um, I absolutely love how it turned out. I really like the painting technique on the trim. The ribs turned out way better than I could have ever imagined. I don't have issues with this project. I really like this project. I've been having fun. I'm glad I added the gussets. I do need to add a modesty panel because we were filming the reveal and I did like a twirl and I looked at my back and I was like, 
that's not cute. <laughs> so I'm going to add a modesty panel. I'll probably again wait until I finished the skirt so that I can have an idea of how high this skirt comes up to get an idea of like what if I want my modesty panel to also cover the skirt, I probably do. That sounds like better than like the alternative. So anyway, saved some of that trim. I still have a little bit of the trim left that's on the like tops and bottoms so that I can use it for the gloves. I think I'm gonna do kind of a similar laying technique for laying, layering technique for the gloves where it's gonna be like the white satin and then the met the the detail fabric the like lace and then at the edges will be the blue so that's something I'm thinking about so I saved all of that leftover but anyway okay so overall I'm loving this project it's so fun it's exactly what I needed for Halloween I could not be in the like more of a spooky fall it like good like brain vibes whatever words <laughs> i could not be in a better spooky mood i'm loving it and i'm ready to just move on to the skirt so if you liked this video feel free to subscribe to my channel give it a thumbs up and uh comment below what you're going to be for halloween or let me know what you thought of this project or let me know what you think of all of the things that i have mentioned in this video and until next time May all your dreams come true.